Hello everyone. I'm on two minutes early because I just didn't want to miss. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, I still have three minutes and so you go do one more thing and then you end up being two minutes late. So I just thought I would be early since I was late on Monday because I totally lost track of time. Don't worry, I set my alarm um, while eating lunch so I wouldn't miss out because the day is just absolutely crazy when Claire goes to school because stuff is just so up in the air, it seems like. Hi, Susan, welcome. So welcome to Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy. It is Wednesday. I wanted to share with you guys um, some fabulous happy mail birthday cards uh, that I got for my birthday. So they definitely made me smile and I love them. So I just wanted to share that with you guys so that you know that when you send a card out, um, the person that is receiving it is probably loving it so much, um, which is why we should all be sending out hashtag happy mail. So super, super cute. Some of them are um, hand stamped and some of them are homemade and some of them are store bought, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the main thing that matters is that someone thought of me which warms my heart, and of course the message on the inside. So um, it's super fabulous, and it definitely, like I said, it super warms my heart. Uh, this is from a friend of mine and her daughter, if you've noticed, that's her foot. And it says, Happy B Day, so super, super cute. Of course, you can probably guess that one is from my parents, since it says daughter on it. But yeah, super, super cute cards. Um, and like I said, they have definitely brightened my day and my week and, um, and I absolutely love it. So anytime it's someone's birthday or you see them post something on social media uh, that, has, that you can send a card for, which is like anything, um, then do it because it'll totally make their day and, um, and they're gonna love it as much as as you're gonna love sending them a card because after all we love making cards um, but we don't want to be bombarded with all the cards that we're making all the time um, and this one I also have to show the little gates like fold open how cute is that um, we need to get rid of them or otherwise like our whole house is gonna be filled with boxes and boxes of cards that we made so we need to send those out and and spread the love You can see there's a lot of bright colors and a lot of pink in a lot of these cards. People know me well. <laughs> and like I still got um, some cards in the mail. So this one is from Claire. Uh, Brad picked this one out. She does love kittens. Um, so yeah, he uh, helped her write it and write in it. I can show you the inside of it. So super, super cute, and I love kittens too. So I just want to snuggle on that little kitten. But yes, I love, I love all of these cards. I will probably be putting them up down here in my stamp room because that's kind of like the safest place to put them. And I'll put them on display for a couple of weeks or until I remember to take them down. Um, oh, looks like Claire got a hold of that one. She got a hold of one of these other ones and colored on the inside of it. So it looks like she also colored on this one a little bit. Also, lots of flowers. Hi, Debbie. See, isn't it fabulous to receive happy mail? It's like the greatest thing ever. Let me move all these cards to make sure that my comments are scrolling. And it's so fun to see, um, like you said, Susan, to see the different styles of cards and everything. And then of course this one is from my husband. Uh, he does make cards sometimes, um, but he also buys cards a lot of times too. And he picks out some of the best cards ever. The words almost always make me cry. Um, they're just the sweetest things. And he still writes on the inside too. So super, super cute, but, um, but yeah, absolutely love them. 
I mostly just keep the envelopes. Um, I keep his because I usually write the date on the outside. And, um, and I kept Claire's because that cute little mommy on the front is super, super fabulous. So today, hi, Laura, welcome. I have a stamp set going in the mail to you, hopefully today. I really need to get to the post office. I've been putting it off for too, many, for too long. So I'm actually just gonna stamp some um, cards that I have left over from a class yesterday. I always like to have extras um, for a last minute RSVP or um, in case someone needs an extra piece, then I'm already ready to go. Plus, it's a great way for me to uh, keep my stash up um, by having extra cards every time I'm creating a class. So why not uh, build my stash at the same time that I um, am having card classes and stuff like that. So this one uses Magenta Madness, that gorgeous, gorgeous color. And the um, Flowers for Every Season Designer Series Paper. This uh, card turned out differently than I had originally envisioned but that happens to all of us doesn't it so I um, I have the different designer series paper and my original thought was that I was gonna do something like this if I can find the right pieces something like this and I guess I'm turning it you guys are are looking at me normal so so it was gonna be something like that but then I thought that the blue one really didn't go so then I decided to add in a solid or a more solid piece these are all oh, all over the place maybe I used all of them oh there so then I decided to use a more solid piece in the center because I thought that would help out because um, it was just too much pattern. But then I almost felt like this one seemed out of place. So then I just did it like this with the two floral pieces on the top and the bottom and the yellow solid piece um, in the middle. I say solid because you can see it's got it's got a pattern to it, but still kind of has that that look. So with these leftovers, I'm making three cards and we're gonna do something different, or I'm gonna try to do something different with each one so that I can really mix it up. And I knew that one wasn't gonna last long, but don't worry, this one's full. So this is just a piece of the same color. It is Magenta Madness. And I used the Forever Greenery embossing folder. So you can see it adds that little extra texture, but it doesn't go all the way across. So you can see the texture that it adds, but yet um, it kind of just has that like subtle look with, um, with adding a little bit of dimension and texture, um, but without really adding a lot to it. It's just one more layer using that same color of cardstock. So how is everybody doing today on a Wednesday? I'm still super thrown off on my days of the week. I keep kind of thinking today is Thursday and it is not. So of course I'm like ready for the weekend again and it's not coming because it's only Wednesday. So yeah, it's kind of, kind of crazy. Okay, so I'm going to set those aside and take all of our little yellow or our little white pieces. And I will say I had a couple people last night do the card with this on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do one of those because I thought it was gorgeous. You love this card? I do too, because it's pink and it's got flowers. Like, what's not to love? Am I right? Okay, so this is how everyone did it. Or not everyone, but some of my um, class goers did their card yesterday. I like to do um, top, bottom, and then the middle, or like left, right, and then the middle. 
sort of working my way in so that my spacing is better. Um, I did have one of my um, class attendees did the left and the right, but they, she did it too far in. So there was actually no space in that center spot. But it looked okay because it looked like she meant to do it since it was even on both sides. And all of the edging was all even. Now, if she would have started left to right, she would have just ran out of space and then the right side would have been super cramped and messed up, but then the left side would have been fine. So you see how like you can kind of make up for it there in the middle. So that is why a lot of times I like to do um, the, the top and the bottom and then finish with the center or the left and the right and then finish with the center. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this bumblebee gingham ribbon. Normally I feel like I cut too much ribbon, but that one was kind of tight. And I'm just gonna curve my cardstock a little bit to rotate my ribbon around. Can't find my scissors. What is everybody having for supper tonight? We are having burgers and I am pumped. Um, I really crave a good juicy burger every once in a while and I'm definitely in that once in a while time right now. Um, and we also, uh, we actually both really love uh, fresh mushrooms like sauteed and in a meal. And uh, they were on sale last week so Brad bought some and we keep forgetting to use them. So we actually had calzones last night. I know we're really like making things crazy now. We're having calzones on non-Fridays and everything else. We just kind of fell off of that train uh, with, I don't know, with vacation and I don't remember what it was, but we kind of fell off that train. So then we're just like, well, let's just eat it whenever. And so now we kind of eat them whenever. Maybe that's what's throwing me off on my week too. Um, but we had them yesterday and then as we were pulling them out of the oven, then Brad looked in the fridge and said, oh, we forgot the mushrooms. So we were like, well, what else do we love to have mushrooms on? And a burger is another good option. So we're having burgers tonight. Oh, they are so fabulous, Susan. And you know what? I don't make my own dough. So, um, what we do is, I almost feel like that looks super fabulous too. Um, we actually get dough from Sam's Club. Did you know that there are a ton of items for sale that are like the unspoken items? So you can actually go up, you know, the front of Sam's where they have food like pretzels and pizza and ice cream and stuff like that and drinks. You can ask them up there for the dough that they use for their pizza and buy an entire box of it. So it used to actually be dough balls, like frozen dough balls. Um, but now they do them as frozen dough sheets. They're already like pizza-fied out. But yeah, um, we get a box of them. They're like less than 20 bucks. And there's probably 20 plus in there. And we just thaw it out and um, cut it and use it as calzones. So we can get two calzones, one for me, one for Brad. And then the leftovers, we just like ball up into like a little dough ball and then bake them. And we get three of those, and Brad uses those for sandwiches. So it's just kind of like a, a bun, if you will. So yeah, if you are a Sam's Club member, then ask them for dough balls. And they kind of look at you like, how do you know that? But they know what it is. What's the other thing that you can get? I can't remember what the other item is that we have gotten at Sam's before. I wanna say it was like in the back because we would get the one up front and the other one in the back. But I'm like totally blank as to what it was that we used to get or st 
still get, but we get it so like far apart because they last forever um, that I kind of forget. Maybe if Brad comes downstairs in the middle of this video, I can ask him because my mind is completely blank on it. And um, for the calzones, I usually put chicken in mine um, since we always were eating them on a Friday. Then during Lent, I would do shrimp in mine. I would kind of saute up some shrimp and put those uh, in my calzone. And Brad almost always does pepperoni. When I was a kid, there was a pizza place in town that had a seafood calzone with crab meat and shrimp, and oh my gosh, it was amazing. I really like this one with the green. I don't know, which one do I like better, the green or the yellow? Super, super cute though, either way. And that means now I can use some of the green little um, embellishments because... Um, I've already used a ton of the yellow ones and the pink ones. I almost feel like I want to do this one in this whole blue, but that means there's no yellow in there for the ribbon, except for the ribbon. I'm just going to do them all in the blue. I think the blue is gorgeous. Also, I have a crazy question for all of you guys because this is the crazy stuff that I think of throughout the day. And I'm always like, oh, I should ask on Laura's dose of stamping therapy. Because after all, you guys are all my experts, right? Okay, so I was washing dishes the other day and I realized that I wash different dishes differently than my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. So they both do it differently, and in a way, I kind of think it's a crazy way, but it still gets the dishes done, and maybe they think I'm the crazy one because, after all, we're all different, and that's fine. So I just wondered, how do you guys wash your dishes? So I like to wash my dishes what I think as a traditional way. I fill up my sink with water and squirt the soap in and I wash with the wash rag and I wash the dish, I rinse it and I put it in, you know, the little, the little drying rack thing. That's how I wash mine. Um, sometimes I like wash a couple things in the sink and then rinse a couple things to kind of speed it up and depending on how big the items are uh, and then sort of, you know, clean out the sink and then fill it up again and do the same thing. So my uh, sister-in-law leaves the rinsing water running and just washes and rinses and washes and rinses and washes and rinses. And my mother-in-law, which Brad will sometimes do it too, will squirt soap into the rag and not fill up the sink, but like wash the sink, or not wash the sink, wash the dishes. And I'm like, now I will say a lot of times they do that when they're only doing a few dishes, but I still find it weird. If there's only a few dishes, a lot of times I don't do it. I just wait till there's more. Um, but yeah, I always just find that weird that they squirt the soap into the rag and then use the soapy rag rather than like filling up the sink with water. So let me know how you wash your dishes. Or if you know of some magical little fairy that washes dishes for you, enlighten me. Which I know, kind of called a dishwasher, but you always have those extra dishes like the hard to scrub pans or the something that needs to be washed now, not when the dishwasher is done. So yeah, let me know um, how you wash your dishes. Hi, Valerie. Welcome. If you're just joining in, welcome to Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy. 
and give me a shout out so I can say hello. I love seeing um, all of you guys on. Some of you are on every day, which warms my heart, or every every time I do this, I guess. And then some of you are kind of hit and miss, but that's wonderful. I also super love watching and reading the comments um, of the replay. So if you're watching the replay, then leave me a comment because I love that too. Um, and uh, if you're watching on YouTube, then leave me a comment there too because I love seeing you guys' comments. Your husband does it all? We share it a lot. I, um, I tend to put away the laundry more and he tends to unload the dishwasher more. So I will say that much. Um, it's kind of just like who draws the raw end of the stick. Like, are you going to go take Claire outside and play while I do the evening dishes or vice versa? Oh, the creativity room. That is so fabulous. You are not the only one um, who is really working on their stamping room. I have another girl who is um, creating one and her husband is helping and he is calling it her stamp studio. It's the word studio, but I don't remember the word in front of it. Craft studio, stamp studio, something like that. Um, so super, super cute. Okay. So this is what we got, and I'm just going to stamp happy birthday on these three circles using, uh-oh, that pink ink that's way over there. Also, you guys will be excited. Hey, Karen! I was just talking about your stamp studio. Does your husband call it stamp studio or craft studio? And this happy birthday is from one of my favorite stamp sets. It is called Peaceful Moments. So it's that little happy birthday. I love a good scrolly font. Um, but there's lots of great all occasion uh, greetings in this set. So, and I really just don't want to put adhesive on the far right hand side because it's going to kind of hang off um, this popped up spot. And I totally stamped this one on like the wrong side. Like it's the back side of the little stitched circle. But that's okay. It's just a different texture. This one's also stamped on the wrong side. Okay, now I need to find my jewels. I didn't prepare for that part very well. Here they are. I feel like craft studio. There it is. Um, I feel like I haven't had to get up and like go find something for a while. So I feel pretty good in that. Um, but you know, every good streak has to end. What is the size of the circle punch? This actually isn't a circle punch. It is the um, layering circle or the stitched circles, stitch shapes. Stitch shapes because there's circles, ovals, and squares in that same set. So you'll see there's that little stitching all around it. And so there's different ones, like different sizes. So really you just need to have a circle punch or a circle die cut that matches the size of your greeting. Um, if I wanted to do... Like with deepest sympathy, I would probably need to go a little bit bigger in my circle. Or if I was doing, like if I was doing something different, I could always do a different sort of um, banner greeting label or something like that. It's just depending on whatever greeting you want for the image um, or for the card. 
and then making sure it fits that. This one I said I was going to do green. I messed up on that one. Well, I'm going to do green on this one then to kind of pull in that other color and also help even up my little gems so I'm not using all of the same color. This one I'm going to use blue. Normally I wouldn't, nope. Normally I wouldn't look at my phone, but when Claire's not home, I get a little bit nervous that like if the school is calling or something like that. So I kind of like to keep a little extra eye on it, um, but it said spam risk. So they will not interrupt Laura's dose of stamping therapy. So there's the four cards. You can see the designer series paper is different in each one, uh, but it has a totally different look. So. These two are very similar. The one has the green, the other one has the yellow. But still a fabulous look. And, and then these two have a floral pattern and a totally different look. This one here, I almost feel like the ribbon is out of place because everything is blue and pink. And then it just has that random pop of yellow um, but I still think it works, and of course, blue and yellow are always fabulous together, so that super works. Okay, so there's one other card that I am going to do with you guys, because I only have two of this one, and I feel like it's pretty quick, and I am so excited about it. I can't wait um, to add, I really need to make like a million of these, um, and put them in my collection, because I think they're good masculine cards. So we're actually using that Forever Fern stamp set that we are all loving because it's just so classic and so perfect. So I have little stitched rectangles. I really went all out on the stitching. That stitching really adds such an extra flair to your project when it's really just a, a poked hole, if you will, um, in the cardstock. So it's a regular like piece of cardstock, whisper white cardstock, and I just die cut it out and it adds that little stitching, but it adds so much to your project. So we're gonna take these four pieces, four pieces per card, and we're actually gonna stamp this same image on all of them but in different colors. So we're gonna start with Old Olive. Hi, Julie, welcome. And you know what I almost wanna do? Is I almost wanna do one full strength, one stamped off. Because one, it'll make this so much easier. And two, it'll give that lighter look. And, um, and it'll still be super fabulous. So I just kinda wanna see which one I like better. The more darker look or the lighter look. That was Old Olive. Why did I go out of order here? Okay, so now we're gonna do Garden Green to really mess things up, because why not? These textured, um, they're actually called Distinctive, and the ink in the middle of Distinctive um, is like in all capitals, um, are so amazing. Like. There's just so much texture and, and 3D realness in the stamp. It's just, it boggles my mind. Like, how did they do it? Like, you can hardly tell which one is the full strength and which one is the stamped off one. But I will say that the stamped off one um, is much lighter. But like, really? Ah. So this one on my left side is I inked it up, stamped this one down first, and then immediately stamped this one on the right side down second. So it's just a little bit of a lighter look. And I didn't have to go back to the ink a million and one times. 
and yeah, it's super fabulous. Um, I'm also going to stamp that last color on the inside of my card just for a little extra fabulousness. Hi, Jean. Welcome. You love the details of them too. I know. They're just like, how do they do it? I just don't understand. But it just makes it look so much real. Like it just looks so 3D and real and it, it blows my mind. Which I have to say, is it genie because there's an E on the end or is it just Jean? And I completely apologize if I'm totally butchering your name. Um, I'm not doing it on purpose, um, which is why I'm asking. So yeah, just let me know, is it genie with like an emphasized E on the end or is it just Jean? Although there's nothing wrong with Jean, so um, it's not just Jean. But anyway, I will, I will stop at that. Okay. One of the other things I wanted to tell you guys about, because I recently learned about it. I mean, I've always known, I just have never actually implemented it. And now I have, and I'm like blown away by it. And I feel like I need to share it to all of you guys. And you're probably like, yeah, Laura, we've been doing that for years now. Welcome to the party. Um, but I have started using Whisper White Thick cardstock for my card bases when I do a Whisper White card base. I use regular Whisper White for all the other layers like these or these layers and even the layer on the inside of this card. But when I use a base, I like to use the Whisper White Thick because one, it's thicker so it's a little bit stronger. The other thing is, is sometimes you'll notice that it bleeds through a little bit. So whenever you stamp something on the inside of a card, or if you stamp something on the front of a card, you might notice that it bleeds into the inside. But with the thick card stock, you don't have that problem. So, super, super fabulous. Okay, um, I am done with most of these ink pads, so I'm closing them before bad things happen, especially since we're dealing with Whisper White a lot. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in these two old olive panels. And again, I'm actually just going to work from left to right. I'm sorry, that was a total lie. I am going to work from the outside in. <laughs> Another option is always to lay them all out, pick up one individual one, place it down, and then pick up another individual one and place it down. So now for these two inside ones, since there's an even number, I'm going to sort of do both of these at the same time. So again, my spacing is nice and even. There is a thicker Whisper White and I'm almost positive, but a vanilla too. Um, again, it's one of those things that I was kind of like, what do I need thicker cardstock for? It's just going to be thicker. Like... And so I always kind of blew it off like it was no big deal. Um, and then I totally tried it and I used it for a card base and I thought, ooh, that is definitely making it not bleed through and has a little bit more oomph to it. And so, you know, now I'm on board. Like I said, I'm probably like the last one to kind of figure that out. But if I didn't know there's still someone else out there that might not know too, which is why there's never a dumb question because if you don't know, somebody else out there doesn't know either and that's why you should always ask. Can I hold one of the ferns up to the camera? Of course I can. Hold on just a second. Woo! That one almost went crooked. So the top one is the darker one and the bottom one is the stamped off once. So you can see it's just a hair lighter. 
but you can see how it's got that weird texture so it really makes the the leaf have like dimension and realness to it so now these are just going to go on our card front and we're going to stamp a greeting and add some ribbon and it's as simple as that This is um, Old Olive Ribbon. Ooh, I'm really pushing the boundaries of danger um, because I am going to apparently stamp my greeting last and hope I can get it out right. You're very welcome, Valerie. One of the other things I wanted to chat with you guys about today because I've had this question a couple times um, and it's no secret or anything, so I just thought I would share it with all of you guys. But um, I have had the question of what is a hostess code and why do I have it? So you might notice scrolling across the top, um, it says that you can shop with me, Laura's, Laura, uh, Laura's stamp and, um, and to use the hostess code. So a hostess code is a fabulous little way for you to get hostess benefits. Um, from those that may not live around you or from um, those that maybe cannot attend your party or anything like that. Of course, we're in a totally different time right now where we're not really having parties as much. Um, I kind of like to call them more like private classes than parties uh, because after all, we're creating cards and having fun and, um, and learning about stamping. So say you're having a, um, a private party with all of your friends and you have an aunt who lives in California and she can't attend obviously but she loves to stamp and she wants to um, place an order with your party so my camera is just going nuts so I'm gonna hold this up a little bit more so that it can grab that and not sit there and flash for you guys so um, she can place an order using the hostess code and it goes towards your hostess benefits but the order is shipped directly to her and she can still participate in the fun of the party. And of course, I always um, have all my extra people who can't attend the party still enjoy the fabulous benefits of participating in the party. So this could be a Facebook party, an online party. Um, of course, we're doing a lot more of those now, or it can be an in-person party. But it's a way for those that can't attend the party to still place an order towards your party and you get the hostess benefits for it. So that is um, the main reason. I think I'm just gonna use this happy birthday greeting again um, for this card, and I'm gonna stamp it in the pretty peacock. So another reason uh, that I like to use hostess codes are anytime I offer a special, then I might say everyone who uses this hostess code will get XYZ free gift or prize or item or something like that. So then I can just go to my reports, pull everybody using that hostess code, and then I know who I am sending all my goodies to. I also can see that anybody that uses that hostess code is coming to me from a certain spot. So I know that the hostess code that's up above is on my Facebook Live. So then if I get an order from you and I wonder, you know, how you found out about me, then I'll know that it's for my Facebook Live because that hostess code was used. So it's just kind of a way for me to, um, to do some tracking and um, pull orders from, from a certain hostess code or anything like that. And a way for me to get to know you guys a little bit better. So if I see that you, you know, used my Facebook Live um, code, then I might send you a thank you and say, um, you know, what are you loving the most about Laura's dose of stamping therapy? Or, you know, what would you like to see next on Laura's dose of stamping therapy? So that sort of thing. Uh, if you ever forget to use the hostess code, it's no big deal. Uh, if I do have a promotion going on that is linked to a hostess code and you forget, just send me a message and say, hey, I forgot the hostess code, but I definitely want to be a part of that fabulous offer that you have. And if you're ever spending over $150, definitely don't use the hostess code because at $150,
you start earning hostess rewards yourself, it's okay. You can be your own hostess. Um, and I don't want you to use the hostess code because otherwise you won't get those benefits. So again, uh, if you ever place an order over 150 and don't use the code, you can always message me and say, hey, I'm still a part of that offer that you have going on, but I didn't use the hostess code. So it just kind of depends. Um, I don't always run um, a lot of offers with it, but it just, here and there, I like to do that just to give back to all of you guys. Um, and it's super, super fun. So that's just a little bit about hostess codes and, um, and why I have that going across the top and, um, and everything like that. So again, I had uh, some people reach out to me and just ask about that and there's no secret behind it or anything. So I just thought I would share it with all of you guys because if, again, if someone is asking me, then they're not the only ones who are wondering. So I thought I would share the answer on here for everyone. So these are the cards that we made today. I think these are great masculine cards. Of course, these pink ones are great feminine cards. Um, and so now I feel like I have a little bit of everything, but I obviously have four of one and two of the other, so I need to make a lot more of these. But I think these would be great for a lot of different occasions, just because they're that classic greenery and it just, it works for everything, which is why I love that Forever Fern stamp set. It's just so classic. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> Lots of people have like or at the end of their name. So it is just, it is Jean and it just has an E on the end. Again, you can always correct me. I apologize if I ever butcher your name, which is why I don't say last names because I'll for sure butcher it. But that's okay because if you guys know my last name, uh, it's always butchered because if you know how to say it, you don't know how to spell it. And if you know how to spell it, you don't know how to say it. So, um, so that's okay. But I married into it, um, the love of my life, and I wouldn't change that for anything. So I can deal with that. Um, no big deal. I did get bumped because my um, my maiden name started with an S and now it starts with a B. So now I don't have to go into that split S line where it's like it's S, S to SH is in this lane and SI on, you know, no, it's just Bs. It's a lot of times it's A's and B's and there's no line and it's wonderful. So anyway, here are our projects. Uh, from today, I will be back on Friday for another um, another one of Laura's dose of stamping therapy, and then I have big news to share with you guys next week. I'm still working on the um, the final pieces to all of that, but I'm so excited. Uh, I have two big things uh, that I will be announcing next week. So. Stay tuned, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy at 12, 15 Central Time. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Love, hugs, and prayers to all of you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.